Welcome everyone. My name is Jay Bunkaria, a Senior Manager in the Investment Management segment at S&P Capital IQ. I'm here today with our guest speaker, Marty Fritzen, who is a Chief Investment Officer at Lehman Living Fritzen Advisors to discuss trends and insights into the fixed income market. Marty has extensive research on the high yield bond markets and spoken at numerous industry conferences and events. He's also a key contributor to S&P Capital IQ's leverage commentary data. So thanks again for joining us today, Marty. And I uh, just wanted to get your take on the markets. You know, it's been, a, it's been an interesting uh, few months so far in 2015. And I wanted to see what your thoughts were on the differences between the U.S. and European high yield markets. Uh, looking at our next chart we have here, we're showing the USD versus Euro uh, double B non-financial Z spreads. And we can see ever since, uh, two th since January of this year, you know, spreads have been compressing in both regions. However, when you look at the issuance side of the market, uh, European issuance has been ramping up almost double year over year what it did last year, whereas U.S. issuance has been slowing down a little bit. So, you know, based off of these trends and other insights, you know, where do you see these markets going? Well, we look at the uh, two markets, the U.S. and Europe uh, in, in high yield, by comparing them uh, adjusted for the big difference in ratings mix between the two. Uh, the European high yield market is much more heavily concentrated in double B's. So if you just compare the spreads directly, it would appear that uh, Europe is rich relative to the uh, U.S. at most times. Um, the uh, fact is that uh, when you adjust for that, uh, for the last uh, few years, uh, Europe has been consistently cheaper than the U.S. Uh, by our analysis. Uh, just in the latest month, it flipped and went not only to U.S. being cheaper, but actually considerably cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's quite a, a dramatic change in a short period of time. Interesting. So in terms of U.S. being cheaper, you know, are there any you know, sectors that you see are you know, cheaper than the rest or would be a good value at this point? Yeah, um, we look at that in terms of the rating outlooks for the uh, different industries, uh, those that are an improving or deteriorating trend, and then uh, in addition, how they're trading relative to the ratings mix. Uh, right now, the uh, industry with the best ratings outlook by our measure is the home builders. They're right about fair value, but uh, potentially uh, interesting uh, because of the improving credit trend. The financial services have tended to be a little bit uh, on uh, the uh, cheap relative to the ratings despite having a positive ratings outlook. So a little bit of a contrarian view uh, could uh, be helpful. Uh, energy looks cheap relative to the ratings, but the ratings outlooks are deteriorating there. So that's a less compelling story. Uh, the areas that have been rich for some time and continue to be are the classic defensive industries, which I would include in those uh, cable, uh, the um, uh, also the uh, containers and the health care. So uh, the value is in some of the uh, somewhat more out of favor areas right now. Okay, so in the U.S., you know, home builders financials seem to be relatively attractive. But what's going back to kind of the Europe market right now? We see this ramp up in issuance. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that uh, when we saw that happen and the issuance really shift to Europe with uh, very active encouragement by the underwriters. I took that as a confirmation of our methodology mm -hmm. because the issuers had figured out that they were getting a better deal over there. Of course, it's better value for the investor in the U.S., but naturally the flip side of that is a better place for the issuers to go in Europe right now. Yeah, definitely. And, and one of the big things with issuers in the last couple of years we've seen is they've been bringing a lot more deals to market that are these covenant light deals. So I know you've done a lot of research in that space. You know, wh where do you see the levels of protection in high yield shaping out for, for the rest of the year? Well, frankly, they can't go a lot lower. Uh, we've been tracking this for uh, the last few years, and uh, this is the lowest. Literally, this latest month's report was the lowest monthly level that we've seen in covenant quality with uh, the help, if you put it that way, of a lot of those mm -hmm. covenant-like deals. So the issuers are taking full advantage of the circumstances uh, with, as you say, both the U.S. and Europe have compressed. Uh, the, on relative value, the U.S. has gotten cheaper, but uh, it's gotten richer in absolute terms. And the issuers, at some point, see it as uh, not advantageous to squeeze out the la last basis point, but to get more of an advantage in relief on covenants 
which definitely translates into value for them. Great. Thanks again, Marty, for sharing your insights. I really appreciate it. Sure. And uh, for those of you that like to learn more about the latest trends in fixed income markets, please go to our website. Have a great day.